what's up everybody so today I'm gonna be showing you guys uh, something different I've been getting a lot of feedback on my previous minecraft tutorials and one of the things that you guys have wanted to see from me is uh, how to put mods and plugins on a server so today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create something called a spigot server it's uh, very similar to regular minecraft server it just has an extra jar file that uh, when you boot the server up, it uh, launches that jar file instead, and it does a bunch of extra stuff and changes Minecraft and allows you to use plugins. And plugins are very helpful because they don't require the client, which is the the Minecraft uh, user themselves. They don't have to have any mods installed. You can put mods on your server, and uh, for commands, you know, roles. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff with the permission systems that you can do and it doesn't require anything on the client side so I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set that up today if you guys aren't familiar with how to set up a basic Minecraft uh, like a vanilla Minecraft server I'd recommend going and watching uh, my other video I'll have it up here in the corner um, that right there just give you a basic rundown how to install it because it's almost the same I'll be doing it all here today but yeah, so the first thing that you want to do for a spigot server is you got to get spigot. So I use this website, uh, getbucket.org. Basically, they have a pre built jar that you can download. Um, there's another way that you can build the jar yourself. We're not going to do that today because it's a little, little too complicated, I feel, for this video. I might make another video in the future if you guys want to know how to build the jar on your own. Um, so what you gotta do is we're gonna go and we're gonna we're gonna build a 1.13.2 server today. The process for all of these versions right here is almost identical. Uh, you're really not gonna have any differences. And the only reason I'm doing 1.13.2 is because this is the version that a lot of plugins are optimized for right now, or at least being worked on for. 1.14 has some stuff out, but it's not it's not very solid. Um, so we want to go to here and you want to click download on whatever version you're trying to do. I'm going to be doing 1.13.2 so I'm going to do download and I'm going to want to get the spigot.1.13.2 dot jar. So you want to click on this right here and it should download. And if it asks you if you want to keep the file, definitely say keep. And that warning right there is not a virus, it's just uh, Chrome or your browser letting you know that a jar file could potentially be dangerous and it doesn't know what it is. This jar file is safe, don't worry. So pull it to your desktop and uh, what we want to do is basically just make a new folder. You can put this folder anywhere. I'm just going to put it on my desktop and I'm going to call this spigot and then I'm going to drag a jar file into there. So this is going to be the directory that we're working out of. So, to make everything easy on myself, I'm going to rename this right now to just spigot.jar. And now we have to write the batch file. So, make a new text document. So, right click in the blank space in here and go to New Text Document. And if you don't see this .txt right here, I'm pretty sure Windows 10 you would go to View Options over here on the right change folder and search options and you can click view the view tab on the top up here and then in this checklist down here you have to make sure that it says hide extensions for known file types that needs to be unchecked if that's checked you're not going to see this dot txt right here and uh, that's important because we're going to change that in a second so make sure that that right there this right here is not checked and click OK and then we're going to edit this batch file and I just right click edit with notepad and we're going to type in here java tack xms and this right here is the minimum amount of memory that you want the server to initialize with so we're going to say 1024m for megabytes that's one gigabyte and now we're going to say the maximum amount of memory that we want the server to have which is going to be uh, I'm just going to set it at 2046 for, for the purpose of this video, which is going to be 2 gigabytes. And uh, I'll have this in the description so you can just copy and paste it. And then we got to go tack jar. And then we got to go spigot 
dot jar because this right here people keep getting this wrong and I see a lot of comments in a lot of my other videos this needs to be identical to whatever that this is called I changed the name of this if I had left this spigot 1.13 it would have to say that in here because what this line does is say Java which is a program in your computer use this much memory for this type of file and this is the name of the file and if the name of the file is not correct it's never gonna run this it's just gonna give you an error in a command prompt and you're not gonna get anywhere so once you have that done uh, I like to put a I like to hit enter and put a pause just so that when the window exits it doesn't you can read what it says and click save and we should be good and then we can rename this and get rid of the txt that should be there now if it's not and I'm gonna just change that to the name of it to be run and it's gonna at tell you if you change the file name extension it might become unusable are you sure you want to change it click yes and now we have run.bat so now we should be able to click on this and run it as a batch file and if you get this error right here, that means that you need 64-bit Java. So right now I'm going to show you how to actually check if you have 64-bit Java installed on your computer. So the way to do that would be to open up a command prompt. You can do that by just searching CMD. And in here, type in java-d64 dash version like that and if it says error this Java instance does not support a 64-bit uh, JVM that basically means that you don't have 64-bit Java that's why we were getting that error before so what we want to do now is we want to go and get 64-bit Java I'll have a link in the description that'll bring you to this page right here and you want to click on Windows offline 64-bit It'll download this jar file right here, and then you want to install it. So now I'm going to double click on this and we'll click yes. All right, so once this pops up, we can click install and just let Java do its thing. And uh, when it's done installing, we're going to check if we actually have it or not uh, with the command prompt. All right, so once you get to the screen, you have successfully installed Java. You should be good. You can close it and then go back to the command prompt and we're gonna you can click up just to run the same command again and bang now we have a version of it so now if we go and we try to launch our server just by clicking on the run.bat again it should work I demonstrated this in a previous video that I had but this is a big problem for people that have never run a server before so of course it's gonna fail because we need to agree to the end user license agreement in order to run the server go to the eula.txt for more info so in here we'll have eula.txt was a new file that was generated along with logs and server.properties don't worry about the other two for now just go to uh, eula.txt right click on it and click edit it should just be a text document so you should just be able to open it up and you want to change this value right here that says false you want to change this to true and then file save and then run the server again and now if we look in this directory right here we should watch it make a bunch of new folders and files and if this pops up your firewall allow, uh, definitely allow access so that it has uh, your server can talk to people on the outside world and uh, people in the outside world can talk to it you can see it's generating the spawn area now all right, so that's it. The server is technically up and running right now, but there is no mods, there is no plugins, there's nothing on it that we can do right now, anything fun. But the difference between a normal Minecraft directory and this one is, let me open up a normal Minecraft directory. I think I still have the old one on here. So this right here is what a regular Minecraft world uh, vanilla directory looks like. And this is what ours looks like right now. So you can see the difference here. 
we have a new we have actually a lot of different stuff we have uh, some some bucket stuff we have some spigot stuff uh, we also have a plugins folder and this right here is the big deal so this is the folder and if you open this up this is where you're gonna wanna place all of your plugins uh, that you're gonna wanna run on your server so we don't need that that was just for comparison this is the actual server itself we're gonna type in stop to shut down the server right now and wait for it to finish and then click enter to exit out of there and now we're gonna go and we're gonna get a uh, plugin so now I'm actually gonna show you how to put plugins on the server so we're actually gonna go get one so what you would do is you go back on the internet and we're gonna search up uh, I, there's a good one called Banner Maker. I've used this on one of my servers. And uh, I'll just type in Banner Maker on Spigot, search it up, and it'll probably bring me yep, right to the Spigot web page for it. And I get a lot of my things off here. Uh, you can also get them off of Bucket, uh, bucket Resources as well. And uh, one thing you want to make sure is when you go and grab uh, your plugin, you want to make sure that the it supports the version of Minecraft that your server is and ours is 1.13 so this does so we're gonna download it now and it should give us this jar file it's gonna ask if ask us if we wanna keep it uh, we're gonna say keep so now we can take this jar file right here and we're gonna put it in the plugins folder in our spigot folder so we're gonna drag it and we're gonna stick it right in plugins so now bannermaker.jar is in the plugins folder. All right, so we don't need the internet anymore. We can X out of that. We can go back, and now we can take and run with our batch file again, the server. And we should be able to see in the console here uh, that our plugin initializes. There it is, enabling Banner Maker. And no errors, so we should be good. So there we go, and that's how you add plugins to your server. So now if you were to log into the server, you'd be able to uh, access the permissions for this right here. You'd be able to use it. Uh, maybe I'll make some future videos on how to actually set up uh, permission systems and uh, manage those with roles because um, there's some good plugins to let you do that to basically allow certain people on your server to use plugins because uh, you don't want to give everyone access to world edit for instance um, but you might want to give the, everybody access to a plugin like this and there are other ways there are ways to do that there's actually a lot of ways to do that so if you guys want to see that leave a comment down below I'll be sure to uh, get get to that in a future video um, but yeah, so I'm going to go over one more thing in this video just because I've been getting so many questions about it and I feel like i got to cover it in everything I do now. Um, how would you get somebody to join this? Because for me to join this, it's very, very simple. I open up Minecraft and I type in a zero. I don't know why everyone's worried about a loopback IP address. That will work, but you don't need to worry about it. Just type in a zero. And... Typing in a zero will connect you directly to a server if it's running on the same computer. If it's on a different computer in your house, you need to type in the IP address of that computer, and it'll work. Uh, someone on outside of your internet connection, like if you want to get your friend to connect to this, that is where I find that everybody's having the most trouble. Um, what you need to do is you have to look up your external IP address and you have to give that to your friend and that's what they would type in to connect so in order to do that you would open up uh, like an internet browser so I'll open up Chrome real quick the VM isn't the quickest so and then it's it's easy all, all you would do is you would type in what is my IPv4 what is my IPv4 address I'm not gonna do it because I don't I don't want to show you mine but it's going to give you a number similar to like 71.245.122.244, something like that. You're going to get a number like that, and that is what you're going to want to give your friends. And they can type that in. What you type in on your computer and what your friends type in will not be the same 
uh, and not and one won't work for both of you. You both are going to have to connect differently. So if you have any questions on that, you can always you can always ask me personally. Uh, join my Discord. I'll have a, a link in the description. And uh, I'm usually on every single day. Just message me or DM me, and I'll hopefully get back to you. Don't mind my mods if they uh, they yell at you. Just don't post in the general chat. Um, but yeah, that's all I really got to show you guys for today. But yeah, that's just a quick and easy way to set up a Spigot server and be able to play around with plugins. Uh, I'm going to show you guys in a future video how to set up a Forge server, which is how you can actually add mods on your server. Let's say like you wanted to play with Thermal Expansion, basically some stuff like me and Ben are doing in that other series that I have on my channel. Um, but yeah, this right here, the client doesn't have to download anything to join your server and play, so... That's I have a Spigot server set up, and me and my friends go on there. We have a kit PvP arena set up, and we do a bunch of stuff. If you guys want to join that, I'll leave a, I'll leave the IP in the description as well. But uh, but yeah, and uh, like I said, I'm always around for help. So join my Discord, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.